If you want to design the best and most realistic roller coasters, I highly recommend using this program called FVD. FVD stands for Force Vector Design, meaning that instead of controlling the path of the coaster by moving around and tilting every little piece of track as you go along, like in Planet Coaster or other games like it, you're actually using graphs of different mathematical functions to manipulate the direction of the track, whether those graphs control the forces that the ride pulls, or the direction of the track itself. But it's actually much, much simpler than it sounds. Today, I'm going to walk you through the basics of how to use this program, so make sure that you watch the whole video so you don't miss anything. There will also be a link in the description for a download of this program so that you can follow along. Alright, so now we are in FVD. This is the loading screen you'll see when you open the program here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of just go to this coaster that you already have here and just give it whatever name you want. Just call it coaster for the sake of this tutorial. And then you'll see this right here, the ground texture. That's if you want to have some overlay like a Google Earth overlay on the ground if you're doing like an RMC conversion, but that's really hard to do, really hard to format it correctly. So what I usually do for stuff like that is I have the Google overlay in No Limits, and then I just import this, import the FED coaster regularly into No Limits and make sure it's like following the path and whatever. So up here you have the file, which is just like create a new kind of thing, load one that you already have, save, and this is the export stuff, which we'll see later. Um, help right here that just shows you different heartline values so as you might know a coaster doesn't just rotate on the basis of like the track rails it rotates based off a heartline which means that like when the ride is turning the like heart area of the rider stays still just so it like makes the coaster smoother so that's just like the different values for different types of coasters that you'd be making um down here you have add a new coaster deleted Here's where you edit it, that's the editor. And then properties right here, this is very important. The friction parameter, it's usually set at 0 .030, which is usually what you wanna keep it at for a steel coaster. For a wooden coaster, you're probably gonna to wanna to put it down to 0 .2, unless it's like a wooden coaster that has a ton of steel in its track, like an intimate prefab or an RMC topper track or something like that, then you keep it at 0 .3. But uh, for now, today, we're gonna to make a BNM Hyper, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Friction coefficient, you don't edit that at all. Heartline height, like we were just talking about, you can edit that. Since we're making a BM, it's always 1.1 meters, so we're gonna keep it like that. Track style is just like what your track shows up as, but it doesn't really matter because, like, once you import it into No Limits 2, you can change it to whatever you want. So, but since we're making a BM, it just looks nicer if we have that track, so we'll just do that. This is if you like want to see the track or the Heartline, I just have everything. Always like that. Um, track colors, you don't really need to edit that so one other thing I'm not sure that is but how to change it from imperial and metric I'm not really I, I oh it's an edit options that's where you want to go so you go up to edit hit options here's where you can change it to feet miles an hour which is what I like because I'm an American this stuff, I, I don't really change. That's just the only thing that you're really gonna need to change in there. So, we have our coaster, we can go into edit. So now, um, first thing you wanna do is hit add, and hit a straight section. So this is where you're gonna add like your different sections. There's four things, straight, curved, and force, and geometric. Straight is only for like stations and lift hills and stuff like that, brake runs too. You're not really gonna use that during a layout. Same thing with curved sections, that's just for like turns, like while you're like going from the brakes to the station or whatever, or from the station to the lift hill. We'll use those later going into the lift hill and for the crest of the lift hill. The force and geometrics where you're actually gonna create the layout. So we'll get to that later when we're actually doing that. So here, we have a straight section and uh, we can just edit the length of this right here, highlight it and then type in about 50 because that's usually what they do. And then right here in this editor, you can right click to deselect the mouse and move, move around like that. W, A, S, D to move around. Pretty simple like everything else. And then uh, you can hold down shift while pressing whatever key to make you go faster and then control to make you go slower. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much movement. So here we have our station. Forgot to talk about this, but right here where it says number zero, this is the anchor. So this is where your track starts. So you can move around the position of this by, uh, you can, uh, for any value in this in this program, you can put your mouse over it and then just roll the mouse wheel and it just like moves it, which is very helpful. Um, for the Y, you can just write in maybe 15 feet, that'll work. But um, yeah, 
and then you can just edit like the angle is so that the speed doesn't really matter because you're just going to edit the speed of this straight section. Um, so usually I don't really do anything with the anchor unless I'm creating multiple coasters, which is not very usual. So I just leave it where it is, put it at 15 feet. The most important thing with the anchor is just editing how tall it is off the ground. So here we have the station. It's 50 feet long, and that's pretty much all you have to do with that. Because this speed here, in No Limits 2, when you import it, is just the track. There's no like track sections. So you can edit the speed to whatever you want in No Limits 2. So I just keep it to 22 so that when I'm running through this in FVD, it doesn't like take forever to go through the station, which is really annoying. So just leave that where it's at. Also, to get on the coaster, you can right-click to deselect the mouse, like when we're moving around, and then you put space, which can help you go back and forth like this. So, yeah, so now we can add maybe a little turn before the lift hill. So here's our introduction to curved sections here. Like I said, you don't ever use these in layouts just for things like this. So we want maybe a little turn in the lift hill like what Mako has. Um, so here are the speed that's pretty self-explanatory. The track radius just controls like the track radius. As you can see here, it just makes it bigger and smaller. You just keep where it is on now, um, change it if I feel it's necessary. The total angle just controls how far it goes. As you can see here, you can make it a bigger turn or a smaller turn. And then the direction changes where it's going. So 90 degrees, it's obviously going to the left. Um, if you want to type in negative 90 degrees, it goes to the right. And then zero goes up. So when you're going to the left hill, like we'll see later, and then 180 is going down. You're not going to ever use anything other than those values, like between that. Like it just has this weird, like, you're, you're not going to use that. So right here, let's do negative 90. So we can have it turn a tiny bit to the right. We're going to go to total angle, scroll down a little bit until it looks good, maybe 30 degrees. So we have just, just this little turn here, maybe make the radius a little smaller. So that's kind of how you edit a curve section there. And then down here, we have the lead in and lead out value. That just shows like if you have a smooth transition going into it or the smooth transition going out. So usually for stuff like this right here, like a turn out of the station, you're going to leave that at um, 10 degrees. Because if you look in here, it just has like this smooth transition into the turn. If we took out the lead in value, it would look like this. So you have this kind of a jolt. It just goes right into it. So for this, we're just going to want to leave it on 10. So let's create a little like, um, usually you can see if a B&M coaster has something before the lift, like a little turn like Mako, I'm pretty sure it has a little stretch of brakes right there. So we can add another straight section here and then make that pretty short, like 20 feet, something like that, which looks good. And then we can add another curved section here, which will be the entrance into the lift hill. So like I said earlier, you can change the direction to zero. So it goes like this, and then the total angle you can change to about 40 degrees, because that's usually what they have for a lift hill. You can go 45 if you want. I'm going to go 40 right now. So you can see how you have this little entrance into the lift hill here. It's a bit um, wide, so you can go to the track radius and move that down a little bit to what it has here. Lead in, lead out values, you're going to leave the same. So now we are going to make our actual lift hill. So you hit add, and then straight section here. I like to speed this up a bit so when I'm like running through it on here when I'm like testing the coaster, the lift hill doesn't take forever. So just move it up to like really fast. Um, and then you can go to length of heart line and just roll your mouse wheel up until right here you can see in the X, Y, Z values directly under that. You want the Y value to be around 200 feet because we're making a B&M hyper. So keep scrolling until we see it's about there. So maybe a little bit below 200 feet. Um, so now we have our lift hill. So the reason I can make this fast is because this next section, the crest of the lift hill, I'm going to actually want that on, want to make that the speed of the lift hill. So right here we can see it's fast and it's tall enough. So that's all we want for our lift hill. Now we can add curve section. And now, like I said earlier, if we want it to go down, you hit 180 on the direction. So now it looks like that. So what you're going to want to do here you're going to actually change the fixed speed here because the speed here actually affects the layout. The stuff we did before does not affect how you create the layout at all. But this, since it's like the crest of the lift hill going directly into the layout, that's actually going to affect it. So what I like to do is I like to delete the decimals and then just use my mouse wheel to just roll it back to about 7 miles an hour, which is what we have here. So now what I was saying about the lead out values, you're going to want to change the lead in value. You keep the same lead out value. You want to change to zero. 
so that it's a smooth transition into the force section that we're going to be creating the layout with. If you had the lead out value, it would mess that up. So you just want that to be zero when going into your layout. So this is a bit wide of a crest that I, so I'd say, um, a bit wide of a crest. So I'll take the track radius, move it down a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So here, I think that it goes a bit steeper than I want. Usually when making first drops, I have this pitch value right here, which is like the vertical angle. Uh, it's at negative 50 right now. This in parentheses is the change in pitch. It'll make more sense. All the all these things along this line here will make more sense when we're actually doing the layout. Right now, the pitch is at negative 50 degrees. We're going to take this total angle, bring it down until this pitch right here is about 15 degrees. So we're going to take this total angle down until right about there. So now you can see the pitch right here is negative 15 degrees, which is what we want going into this layout. So it looks pretty nice. So now we're gonna actually start creating the um, force section. So now for this, just hit add and then force section. So some things you need to know, um, like I said earlier, this X, Y, Z value over here is um, just like the position. Uh, the roll value is like the banking, which we'll get into when we're making the layout. The pitch is, of course, the vertical angle the track is at. And then this parentheses value is how much it's changing per second. It's, it's the same for the roll, the pitch, and the yaw. The yaw is like the sideways motion. Um, so this parentheses value, let's say for in the example of the roll, let's say it's at zero degrees and then it says plus one per second in here. That means one second later, it's going to be at one degree. Second later, it's going to be at two degrees. So when you're making like straight airtime hills, you're going to want it to be at zero and zero. So it does not change at all. That'll make more sense in a little bit. So here we have our force graph. So you're going to, you have this whole area here, which demonstrates the graphs that you're using. So you can take your mouse, it changes this little like uh, crosshairs thing. And then you can um, scroll out and go over to this far right thing. Because right here, th these are showing all of your previous sections that you have right here. That's showing the force of that. What you want is the one that's not darker. This one right here is what you're actually going to be using, this area right here. So the blue right here is the positive force, like vertical G-force. Like positive G is airtime. That's what that is. The red is the roll or the banking or like how much the track tilts. And then this green is the lateral force. So similarly, if we were to use a geometric section where instead of controlling the forces, you're actually controlling the direction of the track. This blue right here is the pitch, which is like up and down. Yellow is the yaw and red is the roll. So that would be if we were doing that. But since it's a B&M, we use a force section because that makes it feel much, much more like a B&M. So over here in this bottom left corner, I have this thing that's editable graphs. You're going to want all of these checked because roll speed, normal force, lateral force. That's what you're going to, you're going to want to see all of those because that's what you use. Um, these, you don't really edit that unless, it, yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, markers, this is important. Section boundaries, you can just kind of, if section boundaries is checked, as you can see, you can see the other sections. If it's unchecked, you just see the section you're on. So if you want to, you can just uncheck that. So you can only see what you're working on. POV position shows here. It means that once you go into POV, you go right click and then space, you can see this little line here that moves. You can see that along the bottom of the screen, how it's moving and just showing where you are, um, in relation to where the coaster is. So that, that's going to be pretty helpful. So that's pretty much all you need for right there. So now let's go and start our coaster. So you can select one of these graphs and here's where it gets important. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, you're going to take the roll graph and you're going to click dynamic. So what dynamic does is it like makes the graph extend to whatever you're doing. So let's do that also for the lateral force. So lateral and roll are dynamic. So that means that when I take this, um, normal force value, and I extend it, see right here, it says like 1.3 seconds, I can roll my mouse wheel to extend it, the roll graph and the lateral graph extend with it. So that'll be helpful later. So just show, showing there how you can edit this, and this just goes along with it, you don't have to like edit how long the roll thing is. So we are going to create our drops. So the default here is the cubic section. When you're first starting, really even um. I still only use cubic and quartic sections mostly. So cubic is obviously like a graph, like, you know, learning algebra and whatever. A quadratic is x squared, and then a cubic is x cubed, and then quartic is x to the fourth. So that's literally what that is. So when you move this, 
it actually takes like a section of that graph. So look here, I can go this, this is the force where you're chaining the force and I can roll that down, see how this, the graph moves. So that's like a section of a cubic section. So when you're using cubic sections, it's just when you wanna go from one force to another and then cortic sections, it goes down and then back. So that's, those are the only ones that you're gonna to wanna to use for right now. So we're gonna want cubic because we're making a drop because you're going down a drop, it has normal force as you're going over the top and then it gets down to about zero as you're going down the descent and then goes up to positive G's once you're in that valley. So that's what we're gonna do right here. We don't need any banking, it's a B and M drop. So we're gonna take this down and this look over here. So this is just the speed. This is the G force experience. Like um, you can see when we're in the POV, you can see this is the G force that we're experiencing here, vertical, and then X is the lateral. So right here, we're gonna take this graph. We're gonna roll this down until this Y acceleration says about just under zero G. So we're at zero G's there. One more and we're just under zero G. So that's what you want. Another important thing, you can hold down control while scrolling on this and it goes in smaller increments. So if you want a really specific G-force, you can do that. Um, yeah, so this is down just below zero Gs, which is what we want. But that is much too tight as we can see here. So what we can do is we can take the length, right now it's 0.9 seconds, and we can just extend that longer until it looks like pretty realistic. So we can extend that there, there, there. I think right there looks about good. So see how we extend, we extend the length of this to make this a wider crest. So now we can hit append. So what append does is it just creates another graph section after the one that you just had. So here we append it and we haven't made any changes to the force. So it just stays at zero G's as it's going down, which is what we want from a B and M hyper. I like to even just emphasize how the drop is falling. I like to move it just down one notch See how it's just going down a little bit there. But um, for right now, since it's a BM hyper and not a giga, usually I do that for gigas, but this is a BM hyper, so we're just gonna keep it like that. So now we have, in summary, we have the lift hill, it goes down to zero Gs, and then it sustains the zero Gs. So let's go back up here. See, we're going over at seven miles an hour. And what you can do on this camera mode, you can use the arrow keys to move the camera down. Then you can just use use W and S to move along this. You can see it goes down to zero G's and sustains that. So that's good for a BNM drop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have the positive force in that little valley there. So we're going to hit append and we're going to bring this up until the Y acceleration right here is about like 3.2 or 3.3. So we're going to keep bringing that up to about 3.285. That sounds good. So the problem is here. It's way too drawn out, look at that. So if we append one more to sustain this positive force, see how it goes down to zero, up to 3.2, and then sustains that, it goes into the ground. So a couple changes we're going to make to fix that. So on this transition here from zero Gs to about 3.2, we're going to want to shorten that from one second to maybe about 0.7. Because if you notice on B&M coasters, when it's going down the drop, there's usually a pretty fast transition from like, that floater airtime to the positive. It's just like going down and then all of a sudden, boom, you're getting positive Gs. So about 0.7 seconds, I think is good for that. And then what we can do to make this look like more of a full value, we can take the length of this and just elongate that a little bit. So now we have a drop. Look at that, that is beautiful. Um, it's a little bit going by the ground, which I'll show you how to fix in a little bit. Let's take that for a test ride right here. So we can hit shift to speed this up while we're pressing W. Now we're going over the top and here it is. So boom down to zero G's and then boom up to 3.2. So that looks really good. So notice how this is kind of going into the ground. So what we can do here is we can select this transition going from zero to 3.2. We can go down here, see how it says time warp and then it says center and tension. So the center basically takes the center of this graph and moves it. So we can put our mouse on here and we can just roll it and see how it's kind of moving the it's kind of moving the graph back and forth. So look at the graph while I'm doing this. It's kind of moving that. So what we can do is we can scroll down so we see the track kind of move up a little bit like that. So that looks really good. So that just takes the center of it, moves it a little over to the left, almost like shortening the graph, but without like actually shortening it. So now let's take this for a test ride again. 
Boom. And that looks pretty solid. Look at that. Beautiful. So now I think we could create a little bit of a turn after the drop. Just kind of a little turn to the left before we go into the first airtime hill. Think like Diamondback. Sort of think that turns to the right, if I remember correctly. So now what we're going to do, also notice that because we kept the lateral and the roll in dynamic, we didn't have to mess with those at all. We could just um, edit the force section and we were good. So now we're going to add the roll section. So this is going to be just a little bank to the left or bank to the, I don't remember what direction I was thinking, but um, let's just do something. So right here, I'm going to deselect dynamic so I can edit the roll section. So I'm going to bring it back to about where I want this banking to start. So I'm um, shortening the length of this previous graph here. About, I would say, I'm going to line it up with this, see this um, transition from 0 to 3.2 vertical Gs. I'm just going to line it up there and then hit append. So now, something I like to do in smoothing, whenever I create a new roll graph, I just hit dynamic, and then I just deselect it and bring it back to what I need. That's just like a quick smoothing that I like to do. It just kind of smooths out whatever you had before. But since we have no banking, it doesn't really matter. So here, we are going to take this, make it about 1.1 section, 1.1 seconds long. So we can have it um, kind of end about halfway through this valley here, if you see what I mean. So now, let's look at this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this roll value, degrees per second, and just kind of move your mouse wheel up so it turns to the left here. See how the track is turning a little bit? Let's bring that to maybe about 30 degrees per second. And then we can append and then hit dynamic, which kind of smooths it. And then one more thing we can do, we can go to smoothing right here, which is very helpful. And then you can just check all of the boxes here. That one says it's too short, so we're not going to do that. And just check all of them. Hit OK, and that smooths it. So now let's look at this little turn that we've made. See that? It just turns a little bit to the left. Very nice. So what that does, see how this is the default here on the roll is a quartic graph. So it goes up and goes back down. This graph doesn't actually, um, this graph does not control the roll. It actually controls the change in roll. So it's going up. So maximum right here. At this point, it's changing at um, 30 degrees per second, and then it goes back down to changing at zero degrees per second. So you look at the value right here in parentheses. This value in parentheses is changing at 25 degrees per second, and then back down to changing at zero degrees per second. So that banking will hold constant. So now we need it to change in the other direction. So let's unselect dynamic, bring this down to 0.8 seconds, and then just roll this downward until we can see the roll value here as close to zero as possible. Right there is good. And then we get append and dynamic. So now, let's smooth this one more time. Let's go back and just see what we have. A little bit turned to the left, and then right there. Looks great. So here, I'm thinking we can do a camelback. So what we're going to do for that, so picture this in your mind. You're going up, you have the positive g-forces in the valley, and then you go up and you have zero g's sustained over that entire hill, and then positive g's again on the bottom. So let's map that out here. So we're going to hit append on the blue section, the positive force. Append. And then because this last section of roll was dynamic, it just follows along. And then we can change this to about 0.7 seconds, because remember the transitions on B&Ms are a bit quick in terms of the transitions between like positive G-force and airtime. So we're going to take this Gs and uh, roll down until the Y acceleration is at zero Gs, or just a little bit below it, right there. That's perfect. So now we can hit append, and look what we got. So that, um, let's actually extend this zero G portion right here. Let's extend that over the whole crest. So that is very, very drawn out. It does pull the forces that we want. Look at that. Zero G's. See right here? Zero G's. It does pull the forces, but it's not as steep as we want it to be. 
So how we can do that, we can go to this positive force section before it. See how it's highlighted in green on the display. We can take that and we can extend it. So boom, one more. See how it makes the hill steeper. Boom, one more. Look at that. Let's even go one more than that. That might be a bit steep. So let's go like that. And then remember what we did at the bottom of the first drop? We added the center of this. So let's click on the transition to zero Gs in this hill. And then let's just move the center so it's a little bit taller. So the hill is a little bit taller. Look at that. So now what we need to do, basically what we did at the bottom of the first drop, append, make it 0.7 Gs, and then bring it back up to 3.2, and then hit append. So notice... It comes up a lot higher off the ground than we want, so we can just take the airtime portion and just sustain that for longer. And notice again here, um, that's a bit too high off the ground, and that's too low to the ground. So what we can do, we can make it low to the ground, and then we could take this transition here and edit the center, move that a bit to the left. So look at that. Let's uh, smooth this one more time and take the take the whole thing for a ride. I just want to move the camera up so I can use the arrow keys to move the camera. Let's go. That's very sustained airtime there. And then it goes down. So that is looking very good for what we want so far. So right here, I don't want to make a super long coaster because, of course, this is just like a tutorial. We're going to want to maybe do some sort of turnaround here. So I'm not thinking like a Fury treble clef. That might be a little too complicated for right now. But um, how about just like something similar to the Orion turnaround, but like a little bit different. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So here... Let's do what we did at the bottom of the first drop again. So we're going to take the roll. We're going to uncheck dynamic. And then bring it back to where the positive force transition ends. So right there you can see it lines up with the roll. That's good. And we can append that. So now we're going to make our little turn. So same thing. We're just going to take this value here. And we're going to roll it down. Actually, I'll go a little bit to the left here. And that looks about good. I have it at 40, 40 right here, 40 degrees. So now we can append this, and then remember the smoothing technique, hit dynamic, and then just uncheck dynamic. That kind of smooths it a little bit, and then do it one more time with the actual smoothing tool. Just go to smoothing, and then hit OK, because all the stuff is already checked in here. You can see that. So that will turn it a little bit to the left, which is nice. But now what we're going to want is we're going to want like a transition back. So I want this element to have a bit strong, stronger air time right here. So just following with what I'm doing. So I'm going to hit append and see right here how this is not checked as dynamic. So it does not follow the length of this. So we're going to check dynamic again here and see how it gets up there. So now let's keep this at about 0.9 length because we don't want this to be as sudden of a transition. But we're going to bring this down to a little bit stronger of airtime, maybe negative 0.2 right there. You can see negative 0.216. That works. So here. What we are going to do is that's a bit low to the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the positive force and extend that. So it's a little higher. You can see that. And then we're going to sustain this airtime for just a little bit, maybe 0.4 seconds there. You can see that. And then we're going to bring it back up to about 3G. So a little bit less positive force than before. And this transition is going to be at one second. I'll show, I'll show you what I'm going to do in a little bit. And then we can append this and kind of extend it a little bit. So right there. I just had the positive force, brought it down 0.9 second transition, brought it down to about negative 0.2 Gs, brought it back up in a bit of a longer transition to 3 Gs. So this looks a bit funky, and that's because we have not added any banking. So what I want it to do is I want it to have a banking transition over this whole kind of airtime moment. So we're going to take this roll section here and have it go until this um, transition here starts. So see how that lines up with that right there? Then we can hit append dynamic, which kind of smooths it, and then bring it back. So we want this to be the length of our whole airtime. So it goes the transition down, airtime, transition back. And that lines up with the end of this, which is what we're going to want. So now 
we can take this roll value right here. We're going to roll it downwards so it turns to the right. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling until it's about like that. So this is at negative 102. And our final banking right here at the end is um, 102 degrees. So I rolled that a little bit more. Now let's hit append, dynamic to smooth. Let's kind of leave it there. So look at that. So basically what I did was I had it turn a little bit to the left here. And then I had it go turn to the right over the crest of that element. So let's extend this positive force. Remember how the roll is dynamic here, so it'll follow it. Extend this back here. So notice how that does not get all the way to the ground. So what we're going to do here is we might, we're going to take this roll and just keep rolling it farther until it's about at the ground. See that? So I made it to 111 degrees of roll. And look at that made it go all the way down to the ground. So let's smooth and let's take it for a ride. So look at that, it's a very smooth transition there, not too fast for a B and M, which is good. So it just goes up, twists to the right, goes back down. It's almost like a almost like a dive loop, actually, just kind of like a non-inverting dive loop. I think it did something like this similar on um it's called Surus, the BM hyper I did back a while ago, like very late 2020, I want to say. So we have our turnaround. Look at that, beautiful. So what we're going to do is um, let's make a speed hill. So these are usually much more low to the ground. And we are going to append this positive force section, bring it down to 0.7, because you know the transitions into airtime are a bit more kind of sudden. So scroll it down to about negative 0.2 Gs again negative 0.2, maybe negative 0.3. Let's do that. Because a lot of people like to think that BNM speed hills are more like negative 0.6 Gs, but actually the strongest airtime that BNM ever designed was 0.25, negative 0.25 Gs. And that was before uh, Dr. Diabogle's cliffhanger at Fiesta, Texas, which they had negative 0.5 Gs. But negative 0.25 is the strongest they did before that. So that's how I know they didn't do too much. So actually here, let's make that See how it's at 0.218. Let's make that closer to 0.25. So we're going to select this, hold down control and scroll down because control makes it go in smaller increments. See there how it's going in 10th of a G here. Now it's going in a hundredth. Now I hold down the control. So now it's at 0 0.226, 0 0.237, 0.247. That looks good. So now let's append. So the problem with this, it's still banked. We need to bank it back to zero. So what we're going to do, we're going to, Uncheck dynamic on the roll, bring it back to about here. I think that looks good. Hit append, and then dynamic, undynamic to smooth. And we want that about to line up with the end of the transition to zero Gs, because that's where we want it to be at um, zero banking. So now what we're going to do, we have this length of our transition right here, and we are going to take the roll and scroll up until right here, we can see it's as close to zero, 0 as possible. There, it's at 0 0.026. Let me hold down control and see if we can get it any closer. That's about as close as we're going to get. So we have it there. Then we can hit append and then dynamic. So now let's just look at what we have. Boom, that is beautiful. It could be a bit higher off the ground. So how we're going to do that, we are going to take this positive force, extend it one more. Seems a bit too high, actually. Let's just bring it back to where it was. That's fine. So now we have first half of our speed hill. 
Now we should bring it back to positive degrees. So 0.7 on the transition, bring it up to about 3.2. Hit append. It's a tiny bit close to the ground, so we're going to take this transition, go to the center, and then move that up like we did previously. So now let's go smooth it and take this for a ride before the um, turnaround just so we can see how that flows into it. So we have the turnaround. Boom. Goes up into the speed hill. That's very smooth, so I'm happy about that. So now... What I'm going to do, I'm just going to create um, two more just floater airtime hills. I will, it's a similar method to what we did in that first one. So I'll time lapse it and I'll see you after I finish those. All right, so now the time lapse is finished. Let's go into creating the final break run of this coaster. So what we're going to do, as we know, we had that little turn before the lift hill here. So we're going to need to turn it a little bit more before we go into the break run. Um, so let's do that. Let's take the roll, uncheck dynamic, bring it back a little bit. I actually have it halfway through this transition. The positive force transition, I have the roll halfway through it. So hit append, uncheck, check and uncheck dynamic to smooth it. Put it about there, halfway through the valley. See how it ends halfway through the valley, like we did in the first drop. Um, turn it a little bit to the left. I would actually say a little bit more than usual. Um, just kind of like that. I have it about 45 degrees. Append, dynamic. And what I like to do, when I'm creating like a little turn that um, turns and then goes back to zero Gs over like some sort of airtime moment, what I like to do is I like to create that airtime moment and then do the roll. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring that to 0.7, bring that to um, so the transition length of 0.7, back down to zero Gs like we had done before. Um, so like that, see that? So we do like the first half, the transition into the airtime, then a little bit of airtime before we do the roll. And then we're going to bring the roll about halfway through this positive force transition here. Because the hills are getting smaller, so you kind of have to not line everything up accurately. It doesn't have to be like that anyway. But um, So we have it about halfway through the transition, maybe a little bit more than halfway. So And then we're going to... Actually, I think the transition should be a bit longer than that, so it's not really snappy. So we have that. We have it about right here. So let's roll the mouse wheel on the roll function. So now, see how it's not exactly at zero. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold down control so it moves in smaller increments. And that's good. So hit append, hit dynamic. And then we're going to go and smooth. So here's what we have. Very nice. So this is actually a transition into the break run. So we want, I actually make this a little stronger. So right here, we're going to take the transition and we're going to move it down. One, two. So that's at negative... 0.246, which is about what we did before for the speed hill. So now, if you look at that, looks pretty good. So now, um, I know the BNM Gigas have a thing where it like goes on top, and then it has like the break run that's like um, on level with that, and then it has the one that's like more angled downward. But well, right here for BM Hypers, it usually has a bit more of that and then a bit more airtime over this hill. And then the brake run itself is just banked downward like that or angled downward like that. So let's do something like that. So in force in a force graph, when you are going into a brake run, what you want to do. So think about it like this. Brake runner is that um, the roller coaster itself is manipulating all these G forces. But when you're sitting on the brake run, it's just normal. It's just one G. So what you're going to do, you're going to take this transition, bring it down back down to 0.7, I think. Because so it's not very much of a transition. It's just from this to one G. So about 1.2 Gs of total transition. So it's at, right now, it's at negative 0.246. So what we're going to do, let's type in 
right here in this uh, force change here, 2, 4, 6, which brings it up to exactly 0. And then we can just make it 1.246, which brings it up to exactly 1G, which is what we want. So we're going to want our break run about, I don't know an exact degree angle, but I'll know it when I see it. So here we see how it transitions back up to 1G. That's a bit steep. So we're going to take this airtime section here and make it a bit shorter, about like that. So now you can see it goes over the airtime hill and into 1G. So let's hit append and then make this 0.1 seconds, which is the smallest you can make for a function. So it's back up to 1G and then 0.1 seconds of that. So boom, boom, into the break run. So look at this. We're going to go back, hit add, and then straight section here. And this is going to be our actual break run. We can elongate that until what I like to do is, so we look back at the anchor. We made that about 15 feet off the ground. So we are going to make, want to make this end about 15 feet off the ground. So what I like to do, I create this straight section, and then I add a curved section that will bring, bring it back up like this. So zero Gs. And then total angle, you want to bring that down until the pitch is at zero. So I can't get it exactly there, so I'm going to hold down control and get it as close as I can. Right there. So that's good. It's a bit tight, so let's take this track radius, make it a bit bigger. So look at that. And we can see here that the end of this curved section is at 17 feet. So we need to make this a bit longer so that the curved section gets down to about 15 feet. So let's make it a bit longer. So this right here just shows the Y at the end of the straight section. So we have to click on curved section. Now it's at 16.349. So we need to make it a bit longer. Now it's at 14. So we need to make it a bit shorter and just kind of fiddle around with it until you get it to about as, as close to the anchor point as you can. There it's about 15.043. So look at this. That is pretty nice. So what you can do here is if you want to, you can make a curved section to have it go all the way back around. I usually have the brake run a bit. I usually like having the brake run parallel to the station if I'm doing something like this. I want it a little bit closer so the turn around isn't that big, but I mean, it's fine. This is just a kind of a tutorial. So this direction here, when I change that to negative 90, so it turns around. Total angle, let's put it to 180 for default. But now we can look here. We can look at this is where the yaw comes in. So here's the yaw value. It's at negative 4.857. We want that to be as close to zero as possible. So we're going to take this total angle and then bring that back. So, and then we're going to hold down control. So it moves in small increments. Right there. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So now because the yaw is zero, it just means it's pointing in that right direction. So it's a bit past the station. So we're going to take the track radius, bring it down. This is where this the x, y, z value you can see over here. The z value, you want that to be zero because that means it's in line with the station. The z is right here, the x is right here, and then the y is up and down. So keep moving that. So the z is at, that works out very well. The z is at 0 0.064. So look at that. It's pretty much the same. And then we can just make some really small straight section there, 20 feet. We want to leave a gap here because what I like to do is I usually like to have a transfer track. And then I create this um, on the transfer track, which I'll, you'll see what I mean later. So over cap, over, I was going to say overview and recap. I mixed those two words together. Um, what we did here, we had the bank back to zero. Force goes to exactly 1G. And then we have a 0.1 transition after that. And then we create a straight section. And then we create a tiny curve section that has a direction of zero. And then that makes that angle as close to a pitch of zero as possible. And then you want to elongate the straight section so that this curve section is at the same height as your anchor point. So the same height as your station. And then you can make a curved section that goes around and then a little straight section. This curve section, you want to make sure it's fully aligned with the station. So now we have our finished coaster. It's very short, not as long as an actual BNM Hyper would be. But it's just a tutorial, so now let's take this for a ride in FVD.
All right, so that brings it back to the final break run here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to export this. So let's smooth it one more time. Smooth all the sections that we can. Hit OK. And we definitely want to save this. We haven't saved it as a file name yet. You usually want to do that earlier in your project so that if, like, you don't lose it. So let's just do, like, tutorial VM hyper. So let's save it as that. Just, like, make, make, sure, make sure it's saved. And then you want to go to... You're not going to go to export, but you're going to go to export as. That's that's a big thing. Export as. And then you get this thing. Make sure you have the right track selected, coaster. And then export from section, you're always going to want to have their first section. I mean, you can name the sections if you want, but um, I should go by the numbers. So we have section one and then section 11. That's what we want. It goes all the way to section 11. So we want to make sure we have all of these um, encompassed here. That, I don't even know what that is. And then segment length, this is important. This is just how far apart the vertices in No Limits 2. Because remember, when you're hand building No Limits 2, you're building with vertices. So this just is just how many meters apart those are when you export this um, track. So you can have it as close together as possible, which will, which is kind of like, I don't know, wrecks your computer. But um, I usually like to have it around 2 to 3. I'll, I'll do it at like 2.2 .2 for here. I, again, you can just roll your mouse wheel to change this. So 2.2 .2 there, hit OK, and then you can just kind of, uh, once you hit OK, you can put in that same name. Don't click on this, because that's like your park file. You just want to write in the name. Tutorial BNM Hyper, enter. So now that is exported. So let's save one more time. So now you have the track exported onto a file in your computer. Um, it will be within your FVD file. So you'll just have to navigate to where that is. You'll have to know where that file is. But um, now you have the track exported, and let's head over to No Limits 2. All right, so now we are in No Limits 2. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how to use this program. We're at the home screen. Um, so we are going to go into the editor, as you probably know. Let's take it so long to load. Um, so now we're going to do a new park. So you can just name the park. And so now you are in your park. So like FVD, you can move around by deselecting the mouse and just doing that kind of stuff. Pretty simple. Um, so here you're going to go to the coaster tab and hit new coaster, just just like you normally would in Nolmus 2. So VM Hyper. You don't, you don't have to name it that. You can name it whatever you want. But now we can go into coaster properties. This is info. That's just the name. And then style. We're going to want to make this into a... Where is it? Um... Hypercoaster four seats across because that's the BM hyper style. Hypercoaster four seats across. Let's make it new. And then the rail type, you can make the either standard or stretch. We're just going to keep it at standard for now. Mode, you want to make sure you have the heart line selected. Trains, they're usually eight long. Some the some of the modern ones like Mako and Candemonium, I'm pretty sure are seven cars long, but whatever. And then the colors, you can just do whatever you want. So I'm just going to fill this in here. So now we have a whole whole thing colored. Um, if we want to be fancy, we can just do like a cool spine color scheme. Let's do the stripe. So we can change the main spine to something else, maybe something orange, a red and orange color, and fiery, and change it to stripe. So as you'll see, when we freeze the coaster, it'll look cool. So just just pick whatever colors you want. Hit OK. Make sure it's saved. And now we're going to go into the track tab. That's a lie. We're going to go into the element tab because what I like to do is I like to place my transfer track first. So let's go into top view, special track, and transfer table. So here we can just place that, double click on it to edit your stuff. So here, let's make it about 50 feet long like we did with our station. 15 feet apart is what I usually go with. I usually go with 50 and 15 no matter what I'm doing, depending on, but unless the like, train is really long. So Y rotation, I like that at negative 90, so it's just facing to the right. And then we had it 15 feet off the ground in FVD, but it went... The FVD like ground measure is different because zero is at zero, but in Nolimits 2, zero is sea level. So we need it a bit higher. Let's put it at 20 feet. So OK and OK. Let's go into perspective view and see what we got here. Very laggy. Um, yeah, so here, this is where we're going to add in our layout. So we're going to click Add Vertex. Then we go over here, 
to this arrow just so it signals where the track is pointing. We're going to click there. So it automatically is straight. Let's go back to select modify here. Um, it's automatically straight because it's coming out of a transfer table. But we're going to take this and we're going to drag it all the way back to as close to the transfer table as we can. But make sure to keep that selected. It needs to be selected so that here we can go to the element tab, add element, and now we can add our layout. So I already have the file pulled up. So file system here. It's in the uh, all of my FVD coasters. I know I've deleted a lot of things, but this is just all the stuff I've been doing recently. Um, let's see. Babe, babe, I cannot find anything. This is why you're supposed to. There it is, tutorial BNM Hyper. So you just do that. You don't need to do any of this stuff. Okay. And now you got your layout. Look at that. It's a B. So here, um, you got your stuff. So I know it was a little bit farther back than I thought, but now we can hold down control. We can select that, hold down control, select this, track tab, and connect. So now it is a full circuit. I don't know why the speed cone was selected there, but. Here is your coaster. So now what we need to do is we need to add in the lift hill and stuff like that. So in No Limits 2, when you're adding in block sections, it's not like Planet Coaster where you change it to like what section you want and then you add it. You make everything and then you add in the section. So here we can go to Type Separator on the Track tab. Click it there. And then just kind of put one where you know your block zones are going to be. I don't know if I can split this into two here. Let's see how long these are. I don't know. Um, that's 37 feet. That's 41 feet. That's not long enough. So we'll just make this into one, one section here. And then over here, change that, put one here so we can have a transport in this area. And then what I like to do is I don't, I don't just create the section here where the strict vertice is. I go to the radius comb and go to wherever it just like, you know, goes to zero. So I like to none there. Now we can make our little trim break before the lift hill and then our lift hill itself and one important thing sometimes the lift hill is a bit like kind of janky when you get it in elements two so what you can do is you can highlight everything except for the strict vertice as in elements two players you know you can't highlight the vertice on the end that's strict but you can highlight all of this pretty much down to like the entire crest of your drop so actually pull up the radius comb go all the way down until you see the transition there so you need to see how it like the radius comb transitions right there boom that's right the that's where the transition from positive from negative to positive g's is keep that there all of this up here needs to be smooth see how that's a little rocky so you go to element and depump vertices and wait for that so there you go i mean you could depump it again i don't really feel like doing that right now but so you have the type separator here. That's where you want your lift hill to end. Um, that's where the lift hill starts. That's where the station is. So now you can go along to all of these sections, select it, track tab, section type, and then just whatever it is. Here you can go to the break. And uh, I can just time lapse this while I set up all my block sections. So now we can just add a uh, lift hill. We can add catwalks to everything. Uh, oh, I forgot to add the storage sections. So let me do that real quick. So now we can just add all of the stuff here. Like that style settings. And left railing. So now you have your coaster. And then... Um, yeah, you have this No Limits 2. I'm sure No Limits 2 players, you kind of already know what to do here. But for people who aren't familiar, you can go to Supports now. Choose Prefab, and now you have your selection of supports that you can use. Uh, I'm just going to go through real quick and do what I'm going to do. And then I will see you guys at the end, and we can show the final product.
right, so now that all the supports are done, here's the final product, and here's the POV. If you guys have any questions about using FVD, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer, and there will be more tutorials coming in the future.